Other interesting business news, you have Ford to make a manual Mustang with a V8 as long as possible as Jim Farley continues to somewhat impress me. I'm a little disappointed by their EV sales. They lost, what was it, $32,000 per EV uh, Q2? So it's, a, or no, is that worse than that? 132000 Yeah, it's not, not great. Rivian is only losing 34000 per EV. They're all doing pretty bad except for Tesla. They do make a profit. Granted, it took many years to do so. And Ford, I would say bar none, won the pony war. I mean, the Camaros, I used to love the Camaro. And great for car to drive. Had a lot of fun with that. But GMs shot themselves in the foot several times by discontinuing the Camaro brand, then reviving it, then discontinuing it. And yeah, lately GM said, you're going to kill this awesome piece of engineering. And the Camaro's going to come back apparently as a two-door EV SUV for some bastardized reason, part of the French. And the Dodge Challenger, very iconic, but again, has come and go. Same with the Charger throughout the years. They've discontinued it, brought it back. The new Charger is going to be an EV or a straight six twin turbo, which... 36 is great for a BMW. They perfected that platform across decades of research development. But you're buying a Challenger and a Charger for a Hemi. You're buying it for the V8, let's be honest. A couple of people do buy the V6 for reasons. But you're, yeah, you're, you're getting it for the Hemi, the V8, and the stick shift. But they've all acquiesced. But one company stands above the rest that is Ford, or some people call it Ferd. And I would think, I think it's, you can definitively say they won the Pony War. Mustang is still being made in America. It still has three pedals. All cars should have by default, I would argue. Now this comes to us thanks to AutoDrive. Specifically, they say, quote, Ford is holding its firm on its commitment to make a manual V8 Mustang despite the industry's bar to shift to EVs. While global re regulations push, push for zero emission targets, Ford plans to keep producing internal combustion engines, particularly the V8, as long as there's demand. Well, unquote, let's be honest. Or as, until the government kneecaps them, as the government is always doing more and more, unfortunately. They say, quote, Ford's global chief engineer, Lori Translau, told the driver, told the drive, quote, Jim Farley has mentioned, and we agree, we are doubling down on our V8 as long as we can possibly sell V8, we are going to. The commitment stands out from all our makers, including General Motors, Mercedes-Benz, and Volvo, have already considered, who have also started to reconsider their plans for full EVs by 2030, which Volvo officially has said, yeah, we're going to back, we're going to put the brakes on that pun intended, because, yeah, the demand for EVs, the adoption rate is dramatically dropping, with one of the biggest growing segments being hybrids, especially in the U.S. Another great example of business ineptitudes of General Motors, General Motors makes one hybrid right now. The Corvette, which is a bastardization in and of itself. But yeah, when it comes to hybrids growing exponentially, one of the few companies actually read the room right is Toyota, where they invested more than any other company in terms of hybrid technologies the past 36 months. And it's going to pay off, I suspect, in dividends. Oh, I'm not sure if they actually pay dividends to their shareholders. But, you know, what I'm trying to say. Here's actually a better picture of the good old Mustang, which is growing on me. If I had unlimited budget, I'd definitely have a Mustang in my garage. I mean, they look they look pretty darn good. And, I mean, can't be that good visceral you know, V8. Granted, if I had unlimited budget, I'd get a 2004, 2005 Ford GT. That's even more iconic, obviously, the rear engine and everything. Now, they say, quote, Ford's decision to keep the V8 Mustang roaring is fully buoyed by the continued success of models like the Mustang Dark Horse featuring a 5.0 liter V8 and Mustang GTD equipped with a 5.2 liter supercharged V8 that turns out over 800 horsepower. Both models continue to draw significant customer interest, giving Ford more reason to keep ICE Mustangs in production. Now, the automaker is also committed to preserving the manual transmission, another hallmark of Mustang's performance legacy. Transfero reaffirmed Ford's dedication, saying, quote, We've constantly looked at our customer, customers' wants and make sure we do everything we can do to deliver what they want. As long as the consumers deserve a desire manual transmission, there's a market for it. We'll continue to offer it. Ford's approach even mirrors other performance brands, such as Bugatti, which produces a V12, and Bugatti, which remains committed to V16. Well, I would say more Pagani, because they actually do have a stick shift V12, which is iconic. That's really, really neat. And yeah, the only thing I'm surprised here is why doesn't, I mean, why doesn't Ford lean into the customization more like Porsche? Porsche does a ridiculous good job uh, listening to consumers. And let you customize everything from the little color of the stitching to your custom paint job to, I'm pretty sure there's like potentially like 800 options for a Porsche 911. I'm only partially exaggerating, but I think it's, again, yeah, everyone daydreams. Every once in a while I look at, well, what if I, what if I win that big deal? What if I close a big project? And I always looked at, you know, the 911. I mean, if you want a custom color that only you could have, very similar to Rolls Royce, Porsche would charge you $40,000, which I mean, I couldn't count, possibly count pre or fathom spending a, a Honda Civic or no, the cost of basically two used Honda Civic SIs on just paint. But I'm surprised. I think there's a market for Ford Mustang owners who 
would pay more of a premium to have additional customization. I know there is some, but not to the boutique extent that something like Rolls Royce or Porsche does. And there are some people who still love American Muscle and I think have disposable income that would go for that. I know it's not the biggest sample size or biggest number of prospective clients, but and that just seems like an easy way to boost profits for the junk portfolio forward. But let me know, do you think that'd be a good idea in terms of adding to the custom options? And then would you or have you ever owned a manual transmission V8? And if not, why not? I, personally, I wish I'd had. I've only have, unfortunately had only inline four engines thus far, though I do love my little Honda Civic Si. I do someday aspire to own a good old V8 with a stick shift. I may would argue all cars should be by default. But as I always say, let me in the comments your thoughts, because as always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, try to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.